Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. Whichever great part of this planet you're residing in right now. Welcome to my channel. I am Nelson. You're watching Nature Nell. And if you're brand new to my channel, welcome aboard. I got some great, great stuff for you guys. It's a little nippy outside today. I did not water a thing because when it's this cold, it's in the mid 60s. I really don't like to shock my plants. You know, we have well water. So for you guys that ask me how I water, when it's this nippy, I try to skip a day. Um, my orchids are pretty hydrated. I look at the roots. If they look greenish, that means they are still hydrated. So I'm fine. They're not drying out and they could withstand a day or two with no water. It's better that than shocking them. I've learned that in my experience, it's not too good for them. So I give them a little break. So since I'm giving them a break today, I'm going to take you guys on a small tour around my greenhouse to show you what's in bloom. We are just beginning uh, to enter in spring here in Miami, Florida. We always start a little bit early, even though it is cold today. It's one of those little, uh, we call them freak, freak uh, cold snaps because they just appear out of nowhere and then they go. <laughs> so, but it's nice. It's a beautiful, clear sky and it's perfect. I won't be sweating while I'm doing this. So without further ado, let's go look at some blooms. All right, everyone, let's start where we always start because there is plenty to show right at the beginning. Two days ago, I was surprised again with this beautiful, beautiful Catlia that I purchased about, I would say a month ago at Kroll Smith. I went and did an amazing, amazing tour of this place and I fell in love with this orchid. If you want to see the actual tour, you can go back and look for the Crawl Smith uh, tour with the orchid doc. And uh, you'll see this flower. It, it just stopped me on my tracks. And Julian, um, the guy who runs the place, uh, pretty much told me they were ready for sale. And I had to take one. That's a uh, full name. It is an FCC awarded um, Cat Leah. And the fragrance is just absolutely delicious. They had a group of these at the International Orchid Show that I just visited. And I also featured it in the display. And it won, uh, I can't, I think an award of quality? AQ or AM award? I don't know. I know I got a re another recognition. The ones that they, he, they had over there. And they were beautiful. They had hundreds of these on display. So mine just gave me the second set. I, the, first one, uh, uh, the first one was right when I bought it. It had a sheath. And it, uh, it bloomed for me beautifully. And then now it gave me another beautiful bloom. And these blooms are even prettier than the first ones. All right, so right next to it, I have shown you, I have shown you this before. I got this recently for you guys who have been following me. I got this over at Ophi's Orchids uh, show here in Miami, Florida. And it was a gift from Lorraine from Orchids and uh, Lee's Orchids and things. And it's such a beautiful dendrobium. And I got to tell you guys, I got so many names for this. <laughs> It's, I don't know why. <laughs> and I looked it up, all the names online, and they were all close. But you know who was the, the winner? Brrr, and I'll show you my new tags as well. Dendrobium Airy Alawana. And I put the date that I got it. I'm putting on some of them. I want to put the dates when I got them to remember how old they are. But this is my new tag. This was actually the very first tag I did. And what, what, the, what the Brothers Printers does, it prints on clear, and this is all supposedly waterproof. So I'm, I'm, this is all testing stage, guys. So we're going to see how well they hold. This is the first. I was referred to this machine. I was told it was really, really good for this. And so, as you can see, I started on, on some of the ones that I have. And then I was playing around with, like, little names on the back and stuff like that. But this is what's really important the name and this was my gift from kelly over in hawaii from orchids in paradise so anyways let's go right next to this beautiful yellow bird that we have here this came from brethren's a while back i would say about a year and a half ago almost two years and it was so tiny when i got it 
And I wanted it to bloom so bad because I love this flower. It's just so, so cool. Those little freckles on the, on the libetum, libetum, I think is how you say it, or lip. <laughs> this area right here. They, um, they're just beautiful. And as, as they age, they shift to this really nice, bright yellow. And the fragrance at night is very, very delicious. But anyways, all of a sudden, one day, it just started shooting spikes. And it, it hasn't stopped ever since. And every time I look, every time I look, if I start searching, let me see. Let me see. Look, hold on. Is this one? Yeah. There's one right there. Every time I look, it has a spike or something coming out. Let me see. Maybe there's another one. That's the only one for now. But it's always spiking. It's such a generous and giving orchid. Now, right here was also a gift that was given to me by my friends over at MS Orchids. They predominantly specialize in the moth orchid or the Philonopsis moth orchid. and But they also have Oncidiums, Cattleyas, other Vandas, really pretty. And they gifted me this and it's finally opening. It have one long spike and it's so pretty, guys. And the smell is delicious. Now, this is an Oncidium Hilo something, Hilo... Hilo Firecracker Lucky Strike, which that Hilo, I don't know why I always think of Hilo Hawaii, where they have the orchid shows every year, the big orchid show in Hawaii. So I wonder if that has anything to do with it. Now, this one I got recently at Santony. And so Santony had it there. It's the only one they had. And I fell in love with it. It's a, it's a species, Lodigizii, I think is how you say it. And these, were, these flowers were already open. As you can see, it's starting to fade. But then these just open. And look how fresh they are. That's such a gorgeous, gorgeous Cattleya. When I saw it at the show, I was like, I have to have this. And I'm going to tell you guys something. I'm really, really, it's getting a little bit stuffy in here with too many things either i'm gonna to have to get another greenhouse or i have to stop shopping <laughs> seriously <laughs> because i don't know where to put a lot of this stuff now now i'll just do a quick thing here in my arachnus crestwood for you guys that have asked me before it's already on the on its way out i featured it several times but um it's still doing great i mean these flowers last a pretty long time that's what i like cattleyas for some reason they, they don't tend to last that long but uh, and Greckums, they do. The flower does last a long time. And it's such a cool flower, right? And right in there, this is the actual spur. It has the nectar in here. And the bug, or not the bug, the moth, that actually has a long enough uh, tongue to go in there, goes through that little hole, goes all the way here, and pollinates the uh, the ingrecum. Very cool. All right. Now here in my greenhouse, as you guys can see, it's very empty in the middle now, right? Guess what I discovered yesterday? For some reason, we thought at first it was termites because it looks totally like it. But when I opened it, see that hole right there, I opened it. There were no signs of termites or the residuals of termites. You know how they leave those little beads? That's a short sure tail uh sure sign that there's um there's termites so what it is it's probably the knot in that wood was rotted uh even though this wood is already made for this but i don't know crazy things happen and it's supposed to be against termites and all this kind of stuff but i guess it, it i don't know it's it was dangerous so i took it out it's fine now everything else is safe but I had to take all the heavy, heavy stuff, and I'll show you later where I put it, um, because it was weighing it all down. I'm going to start with this Tabibot. Now, the sun, it's early in the morning. The sun is at that location that I always feel that it washes out the colors in a way, so I have to kind of grab it and show you guys this way. I want to show you the iridescence of this flower, how gorgeous that is. And the fragrance, I can smell it from here. And it's early in the morning. It's already shooting fragrance. It smells like Fruit Loops. Oh, wow. 
wine punch, which by the way, that fragrance is really like a bergamot. That's the common fragrance of your mind. Told me, let me see. Yeah. It's a common fragrance in, in, in a lot of flowers. It's that bergamot fragrance. So anyways, this is a, hold on, let me see if I can do this like this. <laughs> there we go. Ascascenda Tavava. And I got her at Bang Yang, which was a great purchase because the red in this flower is just absolutely spectacular. And he didn't have that many this, you know, that were at a mature size. So he got me this one. And it's been, I would say this is, oh, look. It's giving me a second one. Thank you, buddy. It's giving me one, two, two already since I bought it. And now another two. So she's pretty good. And I've had her now for like two years, maybe. A little bit over two years. So let's go in this little here part. <laughs> this is my highest, um, not Oktoberfest. I always forget the name of this. They call it uh, the nun's orchid or nun caps orchid because it looks, see, like the old nun cap. If you guys, for you youngins <laughs> that don't know, nuns used to wear these caps that were almost like cover their heads and they would walk facing down. And that's how, that's all you would see. Like that would be their heads and you'd see these big caps. There's a, an old TV series from the 50s called, um, oh my God, what's it called? The Flying Nun. And it was a nun that could fly. And she had one, one sort of these hats. But anyways, this is a beautiful, beautiful orchid. It has an amazing fragrance. Unfortunately, because they look down, you don't see the beauty of the flower, but it's really a very pretty flower. See? It's gorgeous. But the back does look, oh, look, it stayed up. So the back actually is what you see the most. And then you see that little bit of a, uh, purple just slipping out through the bottom but it is a beautiful beautiful orchid and this year she gave me 10 spikes unfortunately the wind we had here for the past two days which has been crazy it dropped this on the floor it actually the wind actually came through here which it hardly ever does and one of them got busted but it's a small price to pay for you know what it could have been because it's it really this poor plant i left her out here i should have put her inside when it was cold and it got some the, the green is coming back, as you can see. It was all yellow, but the greens are coming back. I'm feeding them Epsom salt just to bring, just like my bat plant. Oh, my bat plant looks amazing compared to what it was looking. And look all the new new growth. But the, it was pretty much like this, this color all around. So the see, here you can see some of that yellow, but it's finally coming back. So if you guys leave your plants outside in the cold and you see a lot of yellowing, immediately start hitting them with Epsom salt. I do two, ta uh, two teaspoons per gallon. Don't be afraid. Just pour them, you know, that salt and watch how that green comes back. It really is helpful. Plus, I add cow mag to it. Cow magic. Okay, again, the sun is not cooperating. So this was a gift from my good friend and amazing, amazing supporter of my channel. Teresita. She gave me uh, this from Moats as a little surprise. Now, let me see if I can put it in a spot. Maybe this is a better spot because this, this has no weight, so I can hang it here. Here's a tag, the great tags from Moats that I love so much because they're easy. So that's the name. And if you guys want to know where Mo information on Moats, there you go. Oh, I'm sorry. I did warn you. Okay, I think this is a little better. That's her information. So anyway, I got this little pot when she gave it to me. Oops, sorry. Forgot that I just moved all the stuff here and it's there's a ditch there. So anyway, this pot came from Orchids 365. is a resin 3D pot, which is environmentally friendly. It is really, really pretty. They tend to look like metallic almost. And I didn't know what kind of orchid to to put in it. And I took a chance on this. And look, tell me if this is not like the perfect orchid for that pot. The flowers are actually coppery. 
Like when I saw it open, I'm like, are my eyes playing tricks on me? Because those flowers look like copper. <laughs> and so I send it to Roxy at Orchid 365. And I said, look how perfect this flower matches your pot. And she was like, oh my God, I need to put that on my shorts. So she just put, if you guys haven't seen it, she put it on her shorts. Um, that sounds funny. On her shorts on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, I actually filmed it here and sent it to her. And I'm obsessed. So Teresita, thank you so much for this orchid. This is the first time I see the flower, you know, this is the first time it blooms for me. And it's absolutely beautiful. And thank you, Orchid365, for making such a beauty. That works perfect with that. Hey, buddy, what are you doing? There's Patrick climbing the tree. He's trying to get my attention. All right. So let's see. Let's put this back. Because of the lighting, I think I'm going to have to do it like this. I'm sorry. I wish I could go faster. But I said I, 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 may, I may, may or may not split this episode in half. Okay. This is one that I got over at Carl Smith as well. And I got this one, I would say, about a year ago. And this is a Paxorn Papillonanda something. Hold on. There we go. Papillonanda Paxorn fragrance. And boy, is this fragrant. It has such a delicious candy fl uh, smell. It is one of my favorite, favorite colors, fragrance, orchids that uh, Vanda, that Carl Smith carries. And I always wanted to get one of these. And finally, when I got one, she has not disappointed me at all. I mean, that rich tone, that shiny petal showing how healthy, you know, all the hard work that one puts into these beautiful um, orchids, you know, pays off in the end through the blooms. You see it and through the greenery of the leaves. And this one took a really hard hit in the winter. And again, you see that yellowing? They were all yellow. I thought they were <laughs> it was going to lose all the other leaves. But the green is coming back. So I'm happy about that. Thank you, Carlos. Over at Ophis, he told me, start hitting it hard with Epsom salt now. And I did immediately after I spoke to him. And it, I, this is my third week doing this. And... I am seeing a major, major. I just did it about three days ago. So good thing is I don't have to feed today or do anything like that. I just, hold on, doing this with one hand is usually a challenge. And I don't want to break anything. All right. So this one here, you guys, it's just starting to open. You guys have seen this before. This is the, hold on. Woo. <laughs> the roots get so tangled. They almost, I always say that they're like Velcro. So anyways, this is a very unique Vanda. This is one of those very hard to uh, bloom Vandas. You have to feed her so, so much. She also took a very strong hit from the cold winter. Most of my Vandas did, by the way. Um, I lost a lot of leaves and, you know, we were not expecting it to go to the 30s. It was crazy. But anyways, or the, I think it was uh, high 30s. Yeah, it was like 38, 39 at one point here in my, in my ranch. So anyways, these Vandas, you have to feed them at least three to four um, days apart and feed them full dosage, like one teaspoon of 20, 20, 20 every like four or five days in order for them to push these flowers because it's a very hard, these are on the way out. It had already bloomed this one, but that's what sort of what they look like. They're not fragrant, but boy, when they're all blooming, they're so pretty. It's such a gorgeous, gorgeous Vanda. And this is a Vanda, oh, wait, Vanda Castylus. Hold on, guys. Vandopsis, one of Vanda Castylus. <laughs> so early in the morning. Vandopsis Parisii Ascascenda Guachia Long. Yeah, I don't know. Names are not coming to me early this morning. I'm having little issues. Now, this is not an orchid, but I want to share with you guys how beautiful. This was a gift from a viewer who sent it to me, and I love, love this. Um, you know what? Now that, that I have my tag machine, I have to tag this. I have the name written down. I can't remember now. I kept on thinking it was a hibiscus because here in Florida, they have confused them with hibiscus. 
but it's known as a Chinese or Japanese lantern. Either one is, is correct. Um, and it has a beautiful little flower. Let me see if I can get a better caption. That looks or resembles a lantern. And this was sent to me by a viewer, Fred Pippin. Thank you so much, Fred. I love it. Love, love, love. And she loves it here too. I had to bring her inside because of the hard wind. Uh, it was knocking it down. It still is in a pot. I may put her in a bigger pot very soon because she's just like laddering up all the way. So it's still in that little tiny pot, which I have it held by bricks. So that way there's no way it could topple over. But I'm very happy with it. And she seems to be very happy with me. <laughs> all right. Let me see. Ah, oh, see this one. Now, this one reminds me of a larger version. Look how cool this is. This reminds me of that larger version of the one I just showed you, the Ascacenda, the Vandopsis, Parisii. And I got this at Ophi's Festival. I don't remember the vendor at all. It was a vendor that normally doesn't go there a lot. I think that's the only time I saw them. It was a husband and wife. I almost think it's Dan and Margie, but I don't think it was uh, Dan and Margie Orchids. And they were, they were already wrapping up. I had gotten there late. And I took it. This is called a painter's dream. Painter's dream. And a cross with a coal fragrance. Isn't that not cute? It's such a pretty flower. And, you know, I'm obsessed with all this cranberry and yellow. Trying to get you into the sun. So it shows the true tones. There we go. See, now the lighting is getting a little better. If you guys can cope with me, you know, just taking it down and bring it. <laughs> I'm committed to this. I'm totally committed to this. But I want to capture it, you know, with good lighting. If not, it's not worth it. Now, this one always surprises me. I got, I think I got this one at Ben Young's a while back. I'm not sure. It actually no, this is this is from Bang Young's, but I got it at Santini Orchids years ago, and um, I found out it was uh, there's be it, the tag. <laughs> Hold on, the tag is already gone. This is called a oh my god, I have it written down. I'll put it down there. It's a uh, something blue, sky blue, blue sky, sky blue. It's a Bang Young sky blue band. That's what they call. Even though it's not sky blue, but it's, you know, it's that deep, deep purple that doesn't, you can kind of see the blue hue around it. You can see it more in person, but it is definitely a beautiful patterned, colored orchid. And she too took a very, very big hit. Look at this poor thing. All those leaves fell off. But you know what? It's interesting. It doesn't necessarily mean that your orchid is sick. It just means that the leaves took a beating from the weather. Because if she's, if they're spiking up multiple spikes, they're pretty healthy. Now, this one is also a species. This is a Vanda Marier. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. I'm sorry, guys. This is really difficult. Here, we got it. We got this. You see it? Fanda Marie, A, A E. <laughs> and again, those colors that I adore so much that are like that cranberry and yellow tone. Oh, it's just so pretty. And this one, for the first time, the cakey gave me a spike. And a nice spike, too. Because usually cakeys, they'll give you like two or three flowers. This one's kind of like abundant, considering it's so tiny. It's beautiful. So up here, it's been giving me spike upon spike. That spike just dried up back there. And then this spike was out here and it just shot this new spike that it's opening now. So if you guys want a species that spikes a lot and all year round, this is one of them. This is the one that, and it gives a lot of babies too. They're known for, for producing cakeys uh, more often than, than other orchids or at least other species. Now, well, let's put you in here. All right, anything here? Oh, yeah, there's a big mama. Oh, how am I going to do this? I had to tie this one because this one, oh, no, I'm, this is not going to work because I put a, um, 
Hold on. I got an idea. If I fall, this will be a, definitely a blooper. So, oh, okay, no blooper then. Oh my God, I love this flower. It's so big. This is an Ascacenda uh, Dr. Anek. Hold on. There we go. Ascacenda Salsamaran spots cross with a doctor a neck. Anything with a doctor a neck, it's going to be massive. Anything that you see across with doctor a neck, you're going to get these really, really big flowers. And I, I've been seeing a lot of vandas now being crossed like that. But look how beautiful they are. And, and you can see it. You can see that, that doctor a neck trademark in it. Such a pretty, and I got this at Banyong a while ago. All these are in spike, so we're going to have lots to show. Now, this little beauty right here is my Paphiopetalum Joyce Hasegawa. And I got her a while back. You know what? I'm going to put you in the sun. You deserve to be showcased properly. There we go. I got her a while back at Springwater Orchids during the Redland International Orchid Show. He had it there and I just fell in love. I'm trying to focus. That's why I'm moving so much. <laughs> but I'm moving my other hand. Oh, man, it's crazy. Let me see. All right, it's like my left hand has a braid of its own. So anyway, this one is one of the very few Paphiopetalums that is actually fragrant. It has a very soft floral fragrance. And if you look inside, it has little freckles. It's like a little surprise. Isn't that pretty? So I got this a while back from him, and it's been growing like crazy. And I love the leaves. Look at the leaves. They have like an iridescence. And then on the bottom, is that not beautiful? So I have several. This is a mini of that one. This is actually a mini. I don't want to spill all my medium, but. And speaking of medium, guys, I'm so stoked that I have my own medium. If you guys haven't seen the last haul I did or last unboxing I did, it shows that I'm, uh, my sponsor has created a medium of my own mix, which I've proven it to be pretty good here in the. Now, this beauty here is a Paphiopetalum that I got from. My buddy Josh, uh, Joshua Jones from the Orchid Den, and he was selling this over at the Tamami Orchid Festival this year, and it was in, it was just a bud, but he had one that was open, and I was like, oh my god, that's so beautiful! I love, love, love! I've always wanted one of these, and I said, you know, my Paphios do so good here that I'm not afraid to buy them. A lot of people are afraid because they don't know what to do with them. But here in this section here, I don't know, they, they really like it. And, and I use, um, here, this is a, the name. It's a little bit erased. And somebody told me it was pecan pie <laughs> or pumpkin pie. It was something pie. I can't remember now. But anyways, um, she's open beautifully. And they do last a while. These Paphio Pounds, what I like is that they last a while. All these that I have up here are Paphiopetalums, and they're doing really, really well. Some of them have already bloomed. Others are spiking, so there's plenty more to show. Now, let me see if I have anything else, because there's stuff here that I've already showed in my last What's in Bloom. I love these. These just, just opened. This is one that I always forget, but I will put under its little star cross with its Epicatlea oh, little star. Let me see. Because this is what happens to these, since I'm doing my new tags now. And see, while I film this, I realize the ones I need tags, because I forget. See what happened? And it's an Epicatlea cross with a Brasavola um, lime sherbet or something. I can't remember. But it's such a pretty flower. And it usually blooms like that in threes. Gives you this nice little tiara of orchids. And of course, you know, I love green guys. I keep it green. 
All right, now here I have a tiny, tiny, tiny little one to share with you. Let me see how I can focus on this because they are so hard. Perfect, perfect. All right, this one is a micro, I call them micro orchids. Look at this. <laughs> so tiny. And this is the first time it starts uh, blooming for me. I actually bought this about a year and a half ago over at Kroll Smith from a gentleman from California. I can't remember the name of his nursery. I've only seen him there once, but I know he, he, he does go there at, at other shows. I will be there in the April show. So if I, if I see him, I will feature him because he always has pretty cool things, you know? And uh, this one, let me see, let me get you name. It's hard to focus on these. That's the name, Polybulbum. Golden Gate, Epi Catlea. Or is it Epi? Is, is this an Epidendrum? I got to check. I think it's an Epidendrum. I don't think that's an Epi Catlea. It kind of looks like it. So, anyway, um, oh, there, it just went brighter. This one I've been wanting was on my wish, my wish list for a while. I saw, saw it online from this uh, German nursery. It had, it had something similar to this in a cork. And it inspired me, so I bought three of them, and I put them on this little cork. And that's how I got something to get this big. Now, I had bought from Equajenera the same one and didn't realize it, but look how cool. I put it in this one here. This is uh, pretty much the same one. Now, I remember, I'm looking back here. It's already rubbed off, but I'm going to put the name underneath. It's a Dinema, D-I-N-E-M-A, like Dine, and then M-A, Dinema. Uh, Bulbo uh, pollen or however you say it. <laughs> I have to learn this one. This one's not one I'm very familiar with, but I do love the flower. And I ended up putting this and came in a little cup and I put it on this little uh, piece of mount that I got from the orchid supply store, which is that's where I get most of my mounts. My cork mounts I don't, but my wood mounts I do get all from them. And they just have beautiful stuff. And as you can see, they all immediately, as you uh, they take to the to the wood. I mean, I just got these recently. This one from the Red Line Show about five months ago. Oh no, please no! Don't start barking. Well, we're gonna close it up. Uh -huh. We still got this here. I want to show you. This one's always in bloom as well. This is a beautiful banda from Moats. Look at the colors on that. I love, love, love the colors on this Vanda. It's like a candy store. So pretty. And I got this. This was a, one of the very first Vandas I bought from Moats was this one. I got it at an open house that they had. Um, let me see, because I know they have the, their tags never get lost. This is why I bought the same tags. Hold on. It's a Vanda J JVB crossed with a Kulawati fragrance. It is not fragrance, but it is such a gorgeous flower. Absolutely stunning. And then these I recently got, these Androviums that I still need to name. I think some of you gave me the name. I'm, I just have to look back. If I did get the name, I'm going to put it underneath and, um, and tag it. Because I've been walking around looking to see what do I need to tag. Because when I see them, I remember. But I just started tagging yesterday. I learned how to use it. And this is some type of anusmum. I just don't know what kind. It's a dendrobium anusmum something. <laughs> But I got it from Pam's in, um, in Orchids in Bloom from Apopka. And this one is just starting to open. Now, I do not remember the name of this. If anybody remembers the name of this dendrobium, it's also, I believe, an anosmum. Um, please let me know. It has that beautiful deep purple throat right there. Look at that. That tongue right there, it's just gorgeous. And it does have an absolute incredible fragrance. It's one of those very, very fragrant dendrobiums. All right, guys. So I'm going to cut it here. And I will give you my second part 
over there in that little quick tent, little white greenhouse that I use that is full to the top of the blooms. So if you want to see more blooms, stay tuned. Let me turn this around and give you one last message. All right, my friends, thank you for sticking by, hanging out with me. I hope you loved what I had to show. I still have a lot more. I don't think I'm going to get to all of them because this is going to be a very floral season. I can see it already happening. I'm looking around and I can see stuff I forgot to show you, but it's okay. We have plenty of time. There's no rush. I want to talk about what is going to happen next weekend. If you're in the Redlands or in Homestead or in Miami or anywhere near the vicinity, please check out the Orchid Fair at Ophi's Orchid and Supply. It is amazing. It's located right in Homestead and they have the most amazing, amazing vendors that always come down from all around the state. And we've had people like Cole Smith, Springwater Orchids, Orchids in Bloom, uh, Smiley, uh, Cookie Moss. I mean, it's they have a really big, big list and I'm always excited to go and film because there's always new stuff. Doggy is starting to bark, so let's wrap it up. <laughs> so here's the information as I normally put. It is going to be February 18th and 19th, uh, Saturday and Sunday. And I believe they open at nine o'clock in the morning because now in the springtime, it's, it's uh, cooler outside, so they open a little bit later. In the summer, they try to do it earlier because it's too hot. Um, so if you're down here, please stop by. It's going to be really good. They have a great lineup of people. Uh, I'll probably be there on Sunday early in the morning and then right after that I'll be filming my first home visit at Orchids 365 Roxy's beautiful collection. So I'm excited about showing you that. So whoop, come back here and let's see and we're going to have a live that Friday, uh, February 17th. Josh, Joshua Jones from the Orchid Den and myself, we're going to have a live after five. I always say live after five because it's Eastern time here and um, we never know exactly at what time because I work and he's setting up for the show. So we know that after five, it's safe to say we will be on the live. So besides, it sounds cool. Live after five. <laughs> so we will be together talking about uh, orchid pollination. So orchid porn at its best. You don't want to miss this. It's going to be super cool. He's going to show you guys how he pollinates the flower. He has a bunch of flasks. He's bringing He's telling me all these things he's bringing. I'm, I'm excited. I can't wait. So I may, you know, start the show with you guys. But then when he's going to start doing the demonstration, I will grab the camera and I will film him doing the demonstration because I think that's way more important and it's going to be a lot more entertaining. <laughs> so please join us at that one. It's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. I can't wait. You know, these lives are getting better, better and better. So besides, we can have a nice little happy hour together. We have cocktails and we can cheer together. Now, what else do I have? I think that is it. I will see you on the next one. So anyways, guys, thank you for stopping by. I am Nelson. You're watching Nature Now. And remember to always, always keep it warm and cozy and keep it breezy. See you next time. Thank you.